let's transition to the NFC to Detroit. Let's talk about the matchup between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Detroit Lions as the Buccaneers are traveling to Detroit to take on the Detroit Lions. The Lions are favored by six and a half points. It's a 3 p.m. kickoff on Sunday afternoon. The over-under for this matchup is 48.5 points. Now, these two teams played against one another in week six. The Lions beat the Buccaneers 20 to 6. In that matchup, Jared Goff, he had 353 passing yards, two touchdowns. Baker Mayfield, he struggled. He had 206 passing yards, one interception. St. Brown had a great performance, 12 receptions, 124 receiver yards, and one touchdown. So when I look at this Bucks versus Lions matchup, first and foremost, for me, to, I feel like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, similar to the Green Bay Packers and the Houston Texans, they're kind of playing with house money. And in a way, I kind of feel like it's kind of weird that Tampa Bay is in this position because coming into the season, I thought, and I was wrong, but I thought that the favorites to win the NFC South were going to be the New Orleans Saints. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they weren't consistent, but they won each game that they had to have. Remember in Week 18, NFC South battle with the Carolina Panthers, as bad as the Panthers were this year, we know division games can be tough. And the Bucks beat the Panthers, and they won the NFC South, and then they followed that up, and they beat a team in the Philadelphia Eagles that had completely thrown in the towel. Like, I don't even feel like the Eagles were the Eagles Monday night in Tampa Bay. And so the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were able to beat them, and I'm not trying to 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 take away from what the Buccaneers have accomplished this year. But I do feel like they're kind of playing with house money, similar to the Packers and the Texans. But the Lions, on the other hand, Lions, they had this great, great season. The Lions finished 12-5. and five. They won the NFC North. They finished as the third seed in the NFC. And they have dare I say, a little bit of pressure considering they just won their first playoff game since 1991 Sunday against the Rams. So now, Lions fans, they're thinking, hey, maybe we can make it to the NFC Championship or make it to a Super Bowl. That's what the Lions fans are thinking at this moment. See, I felt like once a team gets that monkey off their back, and they win that playoff game that they desperately, desperately needed to win, then you can play more free. Like the Bengals. Remember when the Bengals won their first playoff win in nearly 30 years when they beat the Raiders at Paul Brown Stadium a few years ago? And then at that point, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, and T. Higgins, they got that monkey off their back, and now you can just play free. You can just play free at that point. And the Bengals went on to the Super Bowl that season so i feel like the lions have more pressure than the tampa bay buccaneers have on them heading into this game let's talk about the bucks and baker mayfield because as critical as i have been of baker mayfield in the past baker mayfield has actually had a nice season this year 28 touchdowns 10 interceptions 4044 passing yards he's completed 64 percent of his passes baker mayfield has been playing some some good football i would say he's been playing pretty good and honestly when you look at the numbers baker mayfield this season he's having arguably a better season in 2023 than tom brady had in 2022 for the buccaneers so let's give baker some credit he has definitely definitely revitalize his career now that he's in Tampa Bay because we had questions about Baker Mayfield. When he left Cleveland, we didn't know how good Baker Mayfield was going to be. He had that run with the Rams. It was brief, but 
Baker Mayfield really didn't have a home. If he can find a way to beat the Detroit Lions in Detroit Sunday afternoon, I feel like we're going to have to have to start the conversation about Baker Mayfield being the franchise quarterback that the Buccaneers are going to build around moving forward. Remember, coming into the season, there was a quarterback competition between Mayfield and Kyle Trask coming into the season. And Baker Mayfield, if he's able to somehow beat Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions, he will be the franchise quarterback for future seasons to come in Tampa Bay. That's going to this 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 is uh, Baker Mayfield has a lot riding on this matchup. Not so much the Buccaneers as a team, but really Baker Mayfield has a lot riding on this game against the Detroit Lions. Now you look at the Buccaneers offensively. They can score points. At receiver, you got Mike Evans, one of the more proven receivers in the NFL. You still got Chris Godwin as well, and I think Chris Godwin is a solid number 2 receiver in the NFL and Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, they have helped this Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense. And offensively, Tampa Bay, they are more of a passing team than a running team. They average 224 passing yards per game. That's ranked 17th in the NFL. But they don't really run the ball much. They are ranked dead last in rushing yards per game. They only average 89 rushing yards per game. But I actually like their running back in Rashad White. I like Rashad White. But they don't really get much production out of the running game. So it's really Baker Mayfield, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, or bust for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But they can, they can score some points. They average 21 points per game. It's not very high as far as league rankings. But I, I just I wouldn't I remember a few weeks ago. I gotta look at the game in a week. Week 15 in Lambeau, that Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense and Baker Mayfield, they put up 34 against the Packers. 34 in Lambeau, week 15. So Tampa Bay can can possibly score some points. And it's the thing. I really don't believe in the Lions defense. I really don't. You look at the Lions defensively. They are ranked in the bottom half in a lot of major defensive categories. They give up 357 total yards per game. That's ranked 20th in the NFL. They give up 248 passing yards per game. That's ranked 28th in the NFL. And they give up 23 points per game. That's ranked 23rd in the NFL. They, they're pretty good against the run. They only give up 89 rushing yards per game. But the Tampa Bay Buccaneers don't run the ball very much. And so against the pass, the Lions give up 248 passing yards per game. That plays right into the hands of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because they like to throw the football. They like to throw the football. So it's going to be interesting. Now, on the other side, we got Jared Goff versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. And for the season, Jared Goff, 30 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 4,575 passing yards. He's completing 67% of his passes. But as great as Jared Goff has been this year, and he's been pretty good. I, I won't even say great. I feel like he's been good. As, as much as he's played good in certain games for the Lions, the Lions rushing attack with David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs, that's the reason why the Detroit Lions averaged 27 points per game, folks. The Detroit Lions averaged 27 points per game, which is ranked fifth in the NFL. And the running game that they have, they averaged 136 rushing yards per game. That's ranked fifth in the NFL. So the way you get Jared Goff in a rhythm is by establishing a running game. But if you're a defense going up against the Detroit Lions, what you want to do is try to slow down that Lions running game and force the Lions into third and long situations. Because then Jared Goff has to force the football down the field. And by doing that, you can create some turnovers as a defense. Because Jared Goff, he has no mobility whatsoever. <laughs> Jared Goff has zero mobility as a quarterback. So if you can get the Lions in third and 
seven, third and nine, third and 12 situations, that's a recipe for success as a defense. So that's something I'm looking forward to seeing if Todd Bowles and this Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, if they're going to be able to do. You look at the Buccaneers as a defense. Obviously, up front on the defensive line, you got Vita Vea. We know Vita Vea can definitely, definitely stop the run and can be a force to be reckoned with. At linebacker, you got one of the best linebackers in the NFL in Devin White. You still got Levante David, okay? In that secondary, they got two cornerbacks who I like in Jamel Dean and Carlton Davis. And I think their defensive backs, the Buccaneers defensive backs, are better than the Rams defensive backs. So they're going to try and and, and contain Amon St. Brown and Jamison Williams for the Detroit Lions. So keep that in mind. That's a key matchup in this game. The Lions receivers, St. Brown, Jamison Williams, Josh Reynolds, their receivers versus the Buccaneers secondary. Jamel Dean, Carlton Davis, okay? Those are going to be some key matchups. And so that's going to be an interesting matchup. I expect it to be high scoring, and I think they're going to put up a lot of points. But – I think that that running game for the for the Lions is going to be key. If David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs can get going in a running game, that will be a recipe for success for the Lions to win this game. I expect it to happen. I think the Lions are the better football team, and I think they're playing with a with with a lot more rhythm right now than the Buccaneers are. So with that being said, I'm rolling with the Lions to beat the Bucks. At Fort Field, I'm going Lions 30, Buccaneers 24.